All right, guys, so very quickly, I want to talk about a story or at the very least a video that you guys have already probably seen of a man saving a baby from getting hit in traffic after an overweight woman falls down trying to save the baby once she noticed that the baby stroller was uh, rolling into traffic now we have more details about what actually happened and who the individuals were that were involved in this incident and i want to talk about it because there's a few key takeaways uh from this video that i really want to talk about and that i really want to stress so without further ado i want to go ahead and roll this clip of this story about a former homeless man who had just got done with a job interview saving this baby okay in a runway while the stroller was headed for traffic as uh, the aunt, the great aunt of the baby, overweight great aunt, struggles to get up out the fallen. So without further ado, go ahead and roll the clip. Now back to that story, that runaway stroller with a baby strapped inside. And tonight we spoke with the Good Samaritan just feet from that traffic. Our Nicole. Nicole Comstock, yeah, is live in Hesperia with the story, Nicole. <laughs> Yeah, you know, these types of accidents can happen to any parent or relative within an instant, and they can happen to pretty much anyone. That baby in the stroller made it all the way down this parking lot here, pretty much all the way out to the sideway in front of the road. So this could have ended very tragically for this family. The Good Samaritan we spoke with who jumped in, he says he just acted without thinking, and he thinks he was in the right place at the right time. Cars travel pretty fast on Bear Valley Road in Hesperia. The speed limit here is 40 miles per hour, right in front of this car wash where Monday afternoon, gusty high desert winds rolled a stroller with a baby inside of it right out toward the road. That's the little one's great aunt struggling to get back on her feet after falling as the nightmare plays out. She sees nobody. She sees the child going into the street and that's all she sees. She can't do nothing. Ron Nesman was waiting on a bench outside the car wash when he saw the woman in her 60s go down hard on the asphalt while trying to catch the stroller. Didn't have time to even think about it. I just, you just react. Here he is on camera running over with the intercept, saving the baby boy before he made it all the way down the driveway and into the passing cars. And I said, you know, I, I got it, you know what I mean? Because I seen I felt so bad for the lady. It was like, uh, I couldn't imagine. I got nephews and nieces. I couldn't imagine something like that. But Ron says he can imagine being in that kind of distress because he's felt it before. My girlfriend passed away in 2018. And, uh, so sorry. Yeah, it was sudden. So I didn't want to do anything. The former truck driver says he became homeless after that heartbreak and only recently moved to Hesperia to reconnect with his family. He had just wrapped up a job interview when he unknowingly stepped into a new role as this little boy's hero. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I did nothing, of course, you know. I'm just glad I realized it and was on it, you know. Well, Ron and his family say they feel an incredible amount of compassion for this woman and that little baby, and they just hope that this story serves as a teachable moment for other families out there to always make sure you double check and make sure those wheels are locked on the bottom of your stroller. For now, reporting live in Hesperia, I'm Nicole Comstock, KCAL News. Really good advice. Boy, it's taking your breath away just watching that stroller go into that traffic, yeah. right? And you can imagine, you know, as yeah. a father, you're probably doing a million things. You're not even thinking that that is going yeah. to happen. Uh, but you can see the relief when he comes yeah. to hug her with the stroller. Just incredible. Bottom line, the baby is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think there's a few key takeaways here. I think the first takeaway while we're talking about the homeless, because we're talking a whole lot about the homeless, when it comes to this Joel and Neely situation, which I think it shows that clearly all homeless people don't deserve to be demonized and all homeless people aren't homeless because they're not willing to work. Some people actually really do uh, have bad circumstances, okay? They have bad luck and they're basically one check, one paycheck away from losing that house or being out on the street, okay? Clearly this guy is not lazy, Clearly, you know, he's trying to better his life and they say that he's formerly homeless. So it, it seems like he's been successful at that. And it's people like him, homeless people like him that I think uh, as society, we definitely should rally around and try to help them as much as we can. OK, we, we really should. Guys like this guy right here, uh, are heroes. He's a good Samaritan. 
And uh, it's unfortunate that he fell on the bad luck with him losing his girlfriend uh, and him ultimately ending up homeless. It was probably a lot of emotional trauma that this guy has been through. Okay. Um, and again, these are the types of homeless people that I think deserve our attention. Okay. These are the ones that as society, we should be trying to help, you know, get them jobs, get them employed. Okay. Get them back into a functioning society. Okay. Because again, he's good heart. Mind's in the right place, uh, just needs some good luck to happen to him. And, and hopefully with this video going viral, somebody is going to hire him and, and pay him a good wage because he deserves that. And that's not to say that the Jordan Neelys of the world uh, should not get our help or our attention, but uh, they deserve a, a certain type of uh, attention, okay? Uh, they're not really interested in being productive members of society, whether that be because they have some type of mental illness going on, okay, that is keeping them from being productive members, or they're just choosing to live lives as criminals. But those people, again, need to be institutionalized, okay? You need to institutionalize those people who are strung out on drugs, who have mental issues that need help, uh, who want to commit a life of crime. They need to be institutionalized, whether that be in some type of hospital bed or in jail, Okay, you can't really help those people. There are some people that you really just can't help. Okay, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm low-key a social Darwinist. There are some people that, hey, they're just not meant to be in society. They can't be rehabilitated. You, you got to separate them from society. But again, guys like this, homeless guys like this, these are the people that you got to focus on. That's what you got to put the resources in, and you got to try to help these people. Okay, they, these are the people that actually deserve the help because they're showing that, hey, I'm willing to put in the work. I'm willing to do what I got to do in order to get a job and to better my life. Okay. If you're putting in effort, you know, I think in society, we should definitely try to help and rally around those people. Okay. But if you're not, if you have something, you know, going on that you can't be a productive member of society, you can't try, you can't get a job or at least attempt to get a job. Hey, you know, I, I think <laughs> again, you need to be institutionalized. I'm, I'm so serious about that. Uh, the second thing I want to say here, uh, is that this is a prime example of why it is so important to be in shape, okay? Or at the very least, be functionally <laughs> in shape, okay? Because that woman, who apparently is the great aunt of that baby, uh, couldn't save the baby because uh, she was older. I believe she's in her 60s, but Again, being overweight definitely didn't help, okay? This person fell. They might have hurt their knee. That could have been a real reason they didn't get up. But regardless, um, it seems to me that this person was struggling uh, because uh, of their weight, okay? It seems like they're out of shape. They can barely get up. They can barely stand up. And even if they could, they were probably going to be very slow or probably not fast enough to actually save the baby because you just never know when you need to save your life or somebody else's life. OK, and you need to at the very least try to be in decent physical condition, especially the older that you get. Right. Because situations like this do happen. They do come up and you should be prepared. And not only just that, you can prolong your life by simply living a healthy lifestyle. What we just saw right there is an example of how obesity can not only kill yourself right you can kill yourself from being obese but also <laughs> it can contribute to other people losing their lives because you're not in shape to be able to even do basic things like run and and, and get a and, and, and save a baby from scrolling in the traffic again it's really embarrassing it is embarrassing that we have people in this country that again can't even do basic athletic movements it's really sad. And again, that's just not to say that, oh, well, everybody needs to have, you know, six pack abs and to be super in shape. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I think everybody, for the most part, should strive. The goal should be to have a basic level of fitness so that if something like this happens, at the very least, you can be functional. Because that homeless man, because he wasn't overweight and obese, he was able to save the baby. Because he was at least athletic enough to run to perform a basic athletic movement, that baby's life was saved. And again, this is why physical fitness is so important. And this is also why movements like the fat acceptance movement, the body positivity movement is poison to this country.
because we're creating people who can't even do basic things. They couldn't even save a life if they wanted to. Can't do basic things because they're too out of shape. They're too fat. That they Again, they can't even function. So, you know, again, I, I think there's a few takeaways here. Again, one, you know, homeless people, a lot, a lot of them, some of them, again, they're not homeless because, you know, they made bad decisions or whatever. They're homeless because uh, they had bad luck. Something bad happened to them. You know, they, they lost their job and they found themselves out on the street. And some of them, again, they really do deserve another chance. They just, you know, need a break. They need a blessing in their life. And then two, again, you should always try to make sure that the older that you get, especially the older that you get, that you try to maintain at least a ba basic level of physical fitness so that you can save your life or somebody else's life if need be. It's really important. And that's something that we really don't talk about enough in this country, really don't preach about enough in this country. In fact, again, we're actively promoting the exact opposite of this, saying that, no, it's totally fine to be morbidly obese to the point where, again, you, you can't even do a basic athletic movement. It, it, it's really sad. So again, thank God this baby's life was saved, that uh, the baby survived. And, um, you know, kudos to this this formerly homeless guy. Okay, I, I hope that, um, you know, he gets the best out of life because he definitely deserves it. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.